this place, God. Oh, we want to start 2020, God, with our hearts that are open. Hearts that are ready to receive what you have for us, God. Surrendering, God, ourselves and giving it to you, God. We give you all praise, God. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? Church, let's sing this together. I was breathing, but not alive. Mm -hmm. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. Oh, yeah. You called my
of the future we stand with no fear father god standing and giving our lives to you lord completely when darkness tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes to steal the joy i own when brokenness Pain is all I know. I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance. Shame no longer has the 
place to hide I am not a captive to the lies I am not afraid to leave my past behind Come on! And I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love Oh, my fear doesn't stand a chance Stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love Oh, there is power in His name There's power that can break up every chain there's power that can empty out the grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. There's power in your name. There is power. There's power that can break up every chain. There's power. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Come on, let's give it up for God in 2020. Starting it off right. You guys can go ahead and be seated. Welcome to Passion Life Church. We're going to go ahead and roll an amazing video, and then I will be right back. Anniversary, Passion Life Church, so exciting. We have a fun gift for you as you leave uh, today, so don't forget to grab that on your way out. Um, happy anniversary. My name is John Thurber. I'm one of the pastors here. So happy you're here with us this morning. If this is your first time to Passion Life Church, welcome. Let's give it up for our first time visitors. 
Welcome. If this is your first time you've been coming for a while, you never fill out a connection card, they're the cards in the seat back pockets, bring it to the Welcome Center. We would love to give you a free gift as our thank you for being our guest this morning. So we are in a, uh, the start of our 21-day fast. Don't be scared. Come on. If you're new, listen, it's all about getting in a deeper relationship with Jesus. That's what we are all about. And so if you're not connected on YouTube, get connected on YouTube. We're going to be having a 21-day of uh, devotionals from our leadership here here at Passionate Life. So if you're not connected, the first one was today, so get connected on our YouTube. Also, we're going to be having our Wednesday and Thursday night prayer nights through the fast. So it's going to be the next three weeks. Wednesday and Thursday nights are going to be our family nights. We're going to have child care there. So come out, get some prayer, pray to God. Listen, there's no pressure to pray out loud. We just, this is a come as you are, come connect with God. It's going to be amazing. So do that. And then plan for January 25th. It is our night of worship. We are going to end the fast with a night of worship. Way FM is going to be here. They're going to be giving away Chris Tomlin tickets. And then we're going to show the love of Jesus to everybody that comes in here and worship our faces off. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go. So I'm super excited about that. So come out for that. Um, and then last but not least, it, hey, let's start 2020 uh, serving the house of God. Let's be a part of an impact team and what God's doing here at Passion Alive Life Church. What is God doing? Man, he's doing big things. And you are a part of that. And God has placed you here in this church because you have a place. You belong here. There's a place for you. So if you're in, in, interested in being a part of our impact team, it's, it's our serving teams because we're making an impact in our family, our community, and in our world. That's what it's all about. And so sign up at the Welcome Center. We would love to give you more information on what that looks like. And now get ready for an awesome message. Welcome to church today. My name is Andrew. Happy New Year. Come on, it's 2020. Can you believe it? Hey, I want to welcome everybody that is watching us on our YouTube channel live. Thank you for tuning in today. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, our 21 days of devotionals start today, so please subscribe so you can be part of that. Man, we wanted to put something together for you to help you on your fasting journey for the next 21 days. Also want to welcome everybody that is listening to us to our podcast this week. Hey, thank you for listening. I pray that this message is a blessing to you. All right, come on. Listen to this. Come on, this is good news. You got perfect church attendance for the year. Come on. You're already crushing 2020. Amen. Hey, last week we talked about what happens in the spiritual realm when we fast and pray. If you missed that, come on, get online, listen to that message. Today, uh, we're going to be, uh, basically, I, I broke up the message in two parts, okay? The first part of the message is we're going to talk about why we should fast, okay? And if, again, if you're new to Passion Life Church, hey, welcome. You, some of you are like, what kind of church did I just step into today? Come on, this is the church. As your pastor, I'm going to challenge you to get closer to Jesus because this year will only be the best year of your life if it's the closest you've ever been to God. Amen? And so, man, I'm going to challenge you here to get closer to Jesus. And so then the second half, we're going to talk about what we're doing, and we're doing what's called a corporate fast and some of the benefits of that, okay? And so what I, what, what I want us to focus on is I want us to focus on doing something, okay? 
for the next 21 days. And, and if you didn't get the, the uh, fasting guide, we have some of those available. Um, but we can also email that to you. If you go to the Welcome Center, um, somebody can email me. Pastor Ben will actually email you today so you have all the information about fasting. Um, what, what I want to encourage you to do is do something for your mind, your body, and your soul. Okay? Do something that is going to get your mind right, your body right, in your soul right, okay? Do something for your mind. Did you know the average American spends over four hours a day on their phone? Staring at their phone? Come on, how about you take a couple of those hours, come on, and read your Bible, right? Like, like come on, like, like, man, get your mind right, okay? Now listen to me, it, it's three weeks, it's three weeks, and so some of you Man, man, I, I know many of you last year, you, you fasted Amazon Prime, you, you, you fasted scrolling Facebook, right, uh, or, or Instagram. I already deleted my Instagram, okay, I want to get my mind right. Um, some of you fasted Netflix, okay, some of you just got nervous, right? Listen, some of you need to fast rated R movies and TVMA shows. Oh, I'm coming for you today. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Pastor, it doesn't affect me. Listen, it affects, it affects you more than you possibly know. Okay? Come on, 21 days. And, and, and listen, some of you are like, it, it doesn't affect me, Pastor. It's because you've become desensitized to sin. And that's what happens. That is the plan of the devil, to slowly erode us and desensitize us from the sin of this world. Come on, do something the next three weeks, that'll get your mind right. Do something that's going to affect your, your body, okay? Maybe you need to start exercising. Maybe you need to start going for a walk every day. Do something that's going to get your body right. That's why Don and I, we, we, we do the Daniel fast, and we encourage people to do the Daniel fast or do something. Give up something food-related, okay? Because food, a lot of times food associates with uh, some type of comfort, okay? Come on, I'm a dark chocolate guy, okay? I tell people it's for medicinal purposes, all right? Like, come on, some, some of you, man, you go to chocolate, you go to sweets. Man, for the next 21 days, cut out sugar. Uh, there's this one lady in our church a couple of years ago, she fasted beer and steak. Come on. And she said it radically changed her life. Some of you... You need to fast alcohol for the next 21 days. Come on, because you rely on that bottle of wine every night more than you do Jesus. Let's get our mind, let's get our body, and let's get our soul right. Right? The soul is the most important port, uh, most important port uh, uh, of the fast. I keep saying ports, because I mean, put my mind on alcohol, right? And I'm thinking about ports. <laughs> It's the most important part. <laughs> of the fast. If not, if we're not doing something for our soul, then we're just on a weird church diet, okay? <laughs> and so that's why we did the 21 days of devotionals. Man, that's why we're encouraging people, man, download the YouVersion Bible app, and if you don't know how to do that, we will help, help you in the Welcome Center. Man, get into your Word. If you don't have a Bible, man, that is our gift for you today. Man, we have lots of prayer, uh, prayer nights happening Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Thursday afternoon. I want to encourage you, man, put that on your calendar. We're ending this with, a, with, with an amazing worship night. It's going to be awesome. Come on, do something. Make a commitment today, and listen, if you mess up during the next... Next week, don't give up, okay? If you break down and melt down and find yourself at the Old Country Buffet for three hours, listen. <laughs> so, tomorrow is a new day. Come on, God's mercies are anew every morning. Start over, okay? And, and, and do something focused on your mind, body, and soul, all right? Come on, let's pray, and we'll get into God's word today. Father, I thank you for this moment this morning. God, I thank you for a new year, and we can have new perspective, and we can have new hope, God. God, it is not a mistake that, that every single person in this room is here and listening to us online and watching us right now, God. God, I pray right now for the next 30 minutes 
that we would focus on you. We'd open our hearts. We'd open our minds to all that you have for us right now in this moment. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen Amen and amen. We're going to jump right into it. Three reasons why we fast. First reason, because Jesus told us to. Should we just end it right there? Should, should I just pray us out? As, as, a, as a believer, as a follower of Christ, we should care what Jesus tells us to do, right? And, and he tells us to fast. Let, let, let's look at Matthew here. Matthew 6, 16 through 18. Look at this. And when you what? He doesn't say, you know, if you feel like it, or if it's not too inconvenient, if it's not too hard for you. No, Jesus says, when you fast, which Jesus is saying, look, look, this needs to be part of your Christian life. When you fast. Don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they will ever get. Now, we've, Don and I have fasted for a long time, and people have the tendency to get dramatic and weird when they're fasting, okay? Now, so if you're at work, all right, and you're eating hummus and carrots for lunch, and someone comes up to you and says, hey, are you on a new diet? Listen, don't be all dramatic and be like, I'm fasting for the Lord. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> And be like, okay, you know? <laughs> Jesus says, but when you fast, comb your hair, which is good, good advice. Comb, comb your hair and wash your face. Come on. Jesus cares about hygiene. <laughs> then no one will notice that you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in private. And your father who sees everything will reward you. It's important to know that Jesus fasted, and his expectation of us as believers is to fast. Like This should be uh, something that is practical and something that we practice in our Christian life. All right, number two, to get uncomfortable. Many times for us, especially in America... For us to actually grow in the things of the Lord, we need to get uncomfortable and, and, and allow God to stretch us and bring us out of our comfort zone. Matthew 4, 1 through 2. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the what? Wilderness, Wilderness to be tempted there by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. He fasted and became very hungry. Leave, leave that passage up there for a moment, Jay. I don't know how Jesus did it because he, he straight spiritual gangster, okay? Like, he did 40 days and 40 nights of just water, okay? I have no idea how he did it. He's Jesus, okay? Um, he doesn't do a re replacement fast like many of us do with the Daniel fast, but he did straight water, okay, for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus was led by the Spirit. He was led by the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that's in you and me and that leads and guides us. And it's important to know that the Spirit of God led Jesus where? To Disneyland? The Spirit of God led Jesus to Hawaii to sit in a five-star resort on the beach? The Holy Spirit led Jesus to a cabin in Breckenridge with a ski pass? Now, none of those things are bad, right? But the Holy Spirit doesn't always lead us into comfortability. Sometimes the Holy Spirit leads us to be uncomfortable. The wilderness was not a comfortable place for Jesus. Come on, it was cold at night. 
It was hot during the day, and, and there was wild animals everywhere, okay? Like, this was not a comfortable place for Jesus, and the Spirit led him to get uncomfortable. That's what the Spirit is doing for us. The Holy Spirit is leading us to get all uncomfortable together. Come on, somebody. We're going to get all uncomfortable together, and we're going to get our minds, bodies, and soul right. Now, for some of you, going to a prayer group is uncomfortable, okay? You're like, well, what do we do? It's how long? It's an hour and a half? What? What do I do? Do I just sit there? Listen, it's going to be one of the most powerful moments of your life to just sit, read your Bible, journal, let somebody pray with you. I want to encourage every single one of you, make it a point. Put it on your calendar, okay? Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we have a prayer group, okay? In the upper room. Come on, somebody. Upper room. Thursday, we're not having, we're not having other life groups. Thursday night, 7 o'clock, we're doing the same prayer group, okay? And listen, if you work swing shifts or, or you work nights, we got a Thursday afternoon group for you at 10 a.m. in the upper room. Because, man, we, we want to, man, we want you to pour into you during this period of time, okay? It's three weeks, guys, and I want you to commit to one of those nights. Because I'm telling you, it will change your life. And yes, it's uncomfortable, but many times God needs to take us and get us uncomfortable so we can grow. Amen? All right, number three, the third thing that fasting does, it supercharges our faith and releases God's power. Come on, I don't know about you, but I want, I need my, my faith supercharged, and I want to see more of God's power released in our lives. Let's read Mark 9, 17 through 19, and then I'll unpack it. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, teacher... I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever this spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth, grinds his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Now, I love people who say, I love Jesus, but I hate the church, okay? Your pastor would never say these things to you. You faithless people. How long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring me the boy. Like, Jesus was upset because, he, man, previously he had just given his disciples authority to heal the sick and cast out demons. And in this moment, they couldn't do it. And Jesus was frustrated. He was frustrated at this. Let's continue. He says, so they brought the boy, but when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, breathing and foaming at the mouth. And I love this. Man, I love this. I, don't miss this moment, okay? Jesus doesn't go over to the boy, okay? He goes over to the dad, and he says, how long has this been happening? And we see this relational piece with Jesus and us. Jesus wants a relationship with us. He wants to have a relationship with us. And, and he doesn't go after the evil spirit. He doesn't, he doesn't pray over the boy. What, the first thing he does is he talks to the dad because we serve a relational God who wants a relationship with us. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He says, since he was a little boy. Jesus, in this moment, now he's being moved by compassion. The spirit often throws him into the fire or into water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us. Help us if you can. I love this response. What do you mean if I can? Hold up. What, what, do you, what do you, like, this is like asking LeBron James if he can dunk a basketball. Dunk the ball if you can. 
Like, he's done it 10,000 times, right? Jesus is like, are you serious right now? Like, you haven't heard about me lately? Like, I'm healing everybody. Like, what, well, what do you mean if I can? Anything is possible if a person believes. Anything possible. So Jesus is addressing our faith in him and his ability to do something. Let's continue in the story. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my belief. That, that's what fasting and pray. Man, when, when we spend the time, it helps us overcome our unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. He said, listen, you evil, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak. He said, I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. And we talked about this week that we have the power, we have the authority through Jesus Christ to cast out evil spirits away from our lives, away from our families, away from our homes, and tell them where to go. Come on, somebody. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The, the boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as people said, he's dead. Let's continue. But Jesus took him by the hand, helped him up to his feet, and he stood up. Afterward, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? Jesus replied, this kind can be cast out only by prayer and fasting. There's just some things in our life that have just been holding on. There, there's been some things that have been passed down generationally that you inherited. Come on, so, some of you had dads and moms that were alcoholics, and, and you got that trait too. It's nothing that you did on your own. It gets passed down. And, and sometimes those things don't let go very easily. They feel like they have a right to be in your life. And so sometimes if you want to get rid of sin, you got to get serious about sin and you need to spend a time to fast and pray. That's what Jesus is saying, man. You got to take time to fast and pray. So that's why we fast and pray. And I want to talk about what we're doing as a church and that's um, a corporate fast. That's what we're doing as a church. We're, we're all doing a corporate fast together to get close to Jesus. And I want to talk about three things that a corporate fast does. Three things that a corporate fast does. I want to read from the, the book of Joel this morning. Joel says this, and the Lord is speaking to Joel in 1, 1 verse 14, and he says this, announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn meeting, bringing the leaders and all the people of the land into the temple of the Lord your God, and cry out to him there. So what a corporate fast does, a corporate fast brings unity to the church. It brings unity to us. And so what's so important about unity? What is so important that, that we're unified? John 17, 23, and Jesus says this about unity. This is, man, and I think I'm going to talk about this in the next series that, that we do coming up starting next week. I am in them, and you are in me. Man, that, that sentence this week just, like, we know, man, when you have Jesus in you, he, that he's in you, right? Like, like, you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and you're a follower of Christ. Jesus lives in you. But how many times do we think about us being in Jesus? That we are in Jesus right now in this moment. That, that we are in God. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me. And that you love them as much as you love me. That God wants to love us as much as he loves his son. And when we as a church come together in unity, in one accord, what happens is the people outside of our community, the people who are lost, broken, and hurting, which we pray for every weekend, would come here and encounter God's love. 
When we have this perfect unity of one accord, moving in the same vision, moving in the same direction, Jesus says the people outside of the community will be coming in and saying, what do you have that I don't have? There is something different about you. There's something different about this place, and the difference is that we are in one accord, we're in a unity together, and we're experiencing the love of God the same way God loves his son, he loves us. And that happens in unity. That happens when a group of people commit to doing something to get closer to Jesus, unity comes. And when unity comes, man, we can see people transformed for Jesus. This last year, we saw 215 people give their life to Christ. Come on. Come on. Get excited about that. 215 people went from darkness to light. 250 people went from eternity in hell to eternity in heaven. And I don't know about you, but I want to see God do more in 2020. And it's only going to happen is if we embrace the unity of the Holy Spirit. Number two, it brings deliverance. It brings deliverance. Come on, let's read Jonah. Let's read in Jonah this morning, 3, 1 through 5, and then we're going to skip to verse 10. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time. Come on, I love that, right? We serve a God of the second chance. We serve the God of the third chance, the fourth, fifth, sixth chance. Right? It wasn't the first time God spoke to Jonah, but it was the second time. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I've given you. This time, Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. I was going to buy some burlap sacks for this week and let you wear them this week. Just kidding. Uh, Nineveh, you want to talk about a city that was addicted to everything? Like, this was Nineveh. Like, like, the plan that God had for Nineveh is he was just going to burn the whole city down with all the people in it, okay? Like, like this, I mean, you want to talk about sin upon sin? You, you want to talk about a city that was inventing ways to sin? It was Nineveh. They were so wicked. They were addicted to literally everything to the point where God's like, man, these people can't live anymore, okay? They are so wicked. They are so evil. I'm just going to I'm just going to shoot a fireball down and burn them all up. Like this was this was his plan, okay, for these people. And what happens when they when they fast and pray? They humble themselves. Even the king steps off of his throne. He humbles himself, and this is what happens in verse 10. When God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, come on, that's true repentance there, he changed his mind and did not carry out his destruction he had threatened. And we've, we, we talked about this several weeks ago. He changed his mind. Like, how God is, mo man, God is moved by our needs. He, he has compassion for us, Right? And, and, man, if you want to move the heart of God, fast and pray. Like, like, God's plan for Nineveh was to destroy them. But because they humbled themselves, they fasted and they prayed, they were delivered. They were delivered from their sin. Listen, some of you have been struggling with some stuff for a really long time. And the devil has convinced you that it's part of you, that it's, it's, it's who you are. Listen, some of you have been struggling with addiction for a really, a really long time. So, so, some of you have been, been struggling with habitual habits and, 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 you know, negative mind, you know, negative thoughts in your mind, 
play over and over and over. You, you struggle from anxiety and depression and you know, sometimes it's hard for you to get out of bed and, and go to work or, or just even function as a human. And Satan has lied to you and said, this is just who you are. This is just part of how God created you. And it's left us in this place of a powerless gospel. It, it, it removes the power from the cross, what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago when he said, it is finished. What's finished? Death is finished. What's finished? The power of sin over our life was broken on Calvary through the blood of Jesus. And so when we begin to, to, to believe the lies of the enemy, it keeps us in this, this, this prison. It, it keeps us in our addictions. It keeps us in our, these, these, these negative mindsets. It, it, it keeps us in our depression. It keeps us in our anxiety. It keeps us in our stress. Come on. If you're sick of your sin today, come on, get serious about it. Fast and pray. I love this church. When we were in the movie theater, uh, a lady really new to church came up to me, and she said, man, i just been touched by your fasting message, and I'm going to fast for 21 days my adulterous affair. I was like, okay, good idea. <laughs> I like it. After 21 days, her marriage was reconciled, and they are doing better than they ever have in their whole life. She's like, man, our marriage. But we have to get serious about the issue. We got to get serious about the sin. And when we, man, we take a time and say, man, I'm going to get serious about this issue in my life because I don't want it in my life anymore. And I'm going to fast and pray for 21 days. I'm going to get my mind right. I'm going to get my body right. I'm going to get my soul right. And I believe that God, uh, the God that I serve, can deliver me yeah. from yeah. anything. Yeah. Come on, we get that supercharge of our faith. And God begins to release his power in his life. And we've seen, man, God has just been doing things over the last couple months. He's been healing people. He's been delivering people. He's been reconciling people. Come on, like, like this is for you too, okay? This is for you too. Number three, the last thing that a corporate fast does, it can bring guidance and direction. Guidance and direction. Come on, anybody need some guidance? Come on, anybody need some direction for 2020? Come on, we all need guidance. We all need direction. Look, look at this in the book of Acts here. The book of Acts, uh, verse, uh, chapter 13, 2 through 3. One day as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting... The Holy Spirit, you see that? Worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, dedicate Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I've called them. So after more fasting and prayer, come on, the early church fasted and prayed, the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. Now, you, if you need some guidance for the new year, Come on, you need some direction, divine direction, divine guidance in your life. Man, fasting and praying will do that for you. You see, we have so much, we have so, so much noise in our life. We have so much noise and distraction and busyness in our life that we miss the voice of God. You see, God doesn't, man, some of us are waiting for God to shout. When he doesn't shout, he whispers. God comes as a whisper, and the reason why he comes as a whisper is because he's so close to us, he doesn't have to yell. But here's the problem. We will miss the whisper if we're not tuned in to God's frequency. Now, some of you who are a little bit younger, you, you won't get this, okay? But... Back in my day, when we walked to school in the snow for five miles with no shoes, <laughs> the, 
there's this thing called a radio dial. And you would have to, to, to listen to the station. You would have to tune in to the frequency, right? And you would have to get it right. And there would be some static. And, and it, it, you'd have to like tune it in and listen to it. And, and then once you got it, then you could listen to the station. And that's many of us. Man, God is speaking to us every day. We just, man, we, we need to tune in to the frequency of God. Because he's always speaking to us. And, and just there's just some, the, the busyness and the noise of life can drown out the whisper of God. And, and it's so easy to get off on the wrong frequency and listen to the wrong voices and the wrong things in our life. And so during these next 21 days, come on, just, just dial it in. Like get on the frequency of the Holy Spirit. Man, God's got so much purpose. He's got so much wisdom. He's got so much guidance for you and your family in 2020. Come on, dial it in. Three weeks, fasting and praying. Do something that will get your mind right, your body right, and your soul right. And I'm telling you, it will be the best year of your life. Come on, let's bow our heads and close our eyes as we go into our response time. Maybe if you're honest today, you would say, Pastor, I've never really committed my life to Jesus. I've never really made that step in 2020. I'm, I'm going to commit today to serve Jesus. Or maybe you've drifted from God and, and now you just want to commit 2020 to Jesus this morning. Again, every head bowed, every eye closed today. This is your personal declaration of faith today. If that's you, just slip up your hand. I just want to pray with you today. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands down. And I would just ask that we would all repeat this prayer this morning as we help those making the greatest decision of their life today. Dear Jesus, I thank you for what you did on the cross. And I ask this morning that you would forgive me of all my sin, that you would come into my life and be my Lord and King. And from this day forward, I will follow you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give them a hand clap this morning. Heaven is rejoicing. If I can have the ushers come. We're now going to transition into communion. It's the first of the month, and it's the first of the year. Man, this represents us putting God first in our life. Listen, the only thing that we ask here at Passion Life Church when taking communion, that you are a believer. Communion and the time to remembering Jesus is for uh, people that, that believe in Jesus. And so uh, as the ushers come, hold on to your bread. I'm going to come up and lead us in taking the bread and the juice.
Jesus then took his disciples into an upper room and began to tear pieces of bread. He began to break the bread and hand each piece to his disciple. And as he's doing this, he's saying, this bread represents my body that will be broken for you. This bread represents, man, my body that will be torn apart for you. Listen, as a follower of the Christ, that doesn't mean that we'll never be broken. That doesn't mean that we'll never be torn apart. Actually, we will be broken. There's going to be times we'll be, we'll be ripped apart. We will be torn apart. That's not the promise. The promise is, is that you can be made whole again because the abuse that Jesus went through in his body, that brokenness you, you feel, you can be healed from your brokenness. You can be healed from, from the things in your life that you've gone through that have torn you apart. The promise isn't that you won't be broken. The promise is that we can be made whole again from the sacrifice that Jesus made. So let's partake in the bread and thanking Jesus for the sacrifice he made. Thank you, Jesus. Search the depths of me and love me to the core. Who controls the world I see and walks me through it all? tell his disciples that this, this wine represents my blood that will be shed for you. Now, why was this important? This was so important because up to that point, they were under the old covenant and you needed to sacrifice an animal. You would take an animal to a priest and it was the blood sacrifice of that animal that would atone for your sins up to that moment, okay? But as soon as you sinned again, which was probably five minutes later, right, you were under sin again. And what Jesus is, is declaring in, in, in his blood is this is the last sacrifice that will ever need to be made. All of your sins, past, present, and future, are covered by this one sacrifice in this moment on the cross. And so as we take the juice today, let's remember that all sin is under the power of of Jesus Christ. We don't have to fear death any longer because the power of death has been broken because of Jesus. Let's partake in the juice today. Thank you, Jesus. We're now going to go into one last prayer and one last worship song. If you could stand to your feet. 
I'm going to open up this portion of the room. If you're a church person, you would call an altar. If you just want to come and pray by yourself or worship by yourself, you can. Man, the prayer cove is going to be open. Man, if you want to invite the power and the presence of God into your situation, man, go get prayer today, okay? Go get prayer today. Man, we've seen so many great things happen. Uh, man, don't do life alone. Come on, invite somebody uh, on journey with you. Uh, man, we would love to pray with you during this time. Let's pray and worship together one last time this morning. Father, I thank you for this moment, God. God, I, I thank you, Jesus, that we can dedicate three weeks out of the whole year to you, God. God, I pray everybody in this room that we would get our minds, our bodies, and our spirits right over the next three weeks, God. God, I pray for, for breakthrough, God. God, I pray for miracles, God. God, I pray that every person in this room would experience your power and your presence, God. I bind and rebuke the father of lies away from every person in this room, every marriage in this room, God, in Jesus' name. God, I pray for that marriages to reconcile, God. God, I pray for freedom from addiction, Father, in Jesus' name. God, I bind and rebuke the spirit of depression out of this room, out of every single person, in Jesus' name. God, I pray for your comfort, Holy Spirit. God, I pray your peace right now over this church. And God, I pray that we would become united in one accord, God. God, I pray that we would, man, we would encounter your love like we've never encountered before, Jesus. And God, we just pray that we would see a harvest of lost people coming in in 2020 for you, God. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
2020 we give it to you God father and first we put you first God by praying by fasting God but uniting together as a church in one heart with one purpose God to honor you to worship you God so father we give you this year we give you today we give you this week God we honor you with our surrender God we give you all glory and all praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Come on, church, give a shout of praise. God is so good. We continue to worship. Now is with our giving. As you exit the doors outside in the lobby, there are boxes where you can give your tithes and your offerings. We'll sing one more time, my life.